question about the validity of emails and whether they constitute a public meeting actually started back in uh, 2015 when the Carroll County Superior Court in Ossipee issued a decision in the case called Porter versus Sandwich. It's a 47 page decision. It analyzes in great detail emails that went out in that case from a zoning board of adjustment chairman to his members in which um, uh, certain direction was given to the board of adjustment members and uh, no reply was made to those emails nevertheless consequences occurred as a result of that direction uh, this led the uh, a person who was uh, aggrieved by the action of the board to bring a case under the right to know law against the town of Sandwich uh, it resulted in a, a long period of litigation depositions and ultimately a 47 page decision in which the Superior Court felt that even if emails that went from to all in that case Zoning Board of Adjustment members uh, even if there was no reply asked for or received that that emailing to all members created an opportunity for contemporaneous response and thus the judge ruled that there was a right to no law violation he ordered that attorney's fees be paid to the other side which actually ran into uh, a couple of hundred thousand dollars just for the other side's fees not even considering the town's fees uh, he invalidated the actions of the town boards that were involved in the emails and he also ordered um, that there be a remedial training given to the boards that were involved. This is a, a consequence that I have, in a proactive way, been trying to avoid for this town. And thus, upon receipt of this decision, I undertook some training sessions with the Board of, the, uh, board of Adjustment, the Planning Board, this board, the Historic, uh, the Energy Committee, and the uh, Budget Committee to try to avoid this type of consequence. So now we fast forward to 2016, and it is brought to my attention by the Selectman's representative to the Budget Committee that she has been receiving, along with other Budget Committee members, a number of emails copied to all of them that seem to contain a lot of commentary uh, that goes beyond just mere information. Commentary that bashes this board, that talks about what positions uh, should be taken. And as a result of that, uh, I sent an email uh, uh, opinion to all the budget committee members, which I'm uh, part of my job is to do, and warned them that they were putting the town in jeopardy and their own decisions in jeopardy under the Porter versus Sandwich case that I've just described. Uh, the emails did not stop. They continued in the same fashion as before, and that led this board to ask that I send, direct me to send to all budget committee members a request for their emails. Initially, I only received a few members' worth uh, that were about 35 emails, and eventually, however, uh, after uh, after the new year in various stages other members provided me with emails i started to go through those and uh, whereas i had about 35 emails before the number uh, as we went along uh, rose to about 127 emails and uh, i'm still not finished counting but i want to stop counting because i have seen that within these emails there are about 50 in which there are opinions expressed from one budget committee member sending to others various forms of opinion about matters that were in the budget committee's jurisdiction. And if you, even if those emails were not replied to under the Porter versus Sandwich case, those could very well put the town in jeopardy of liability. 
and I believe it's part of my job to avoid the town having liability, avoid exposure to attorney's fees, avoid exposure to potential fines, all of which could result. In other words, these emails that express opinions create an unnecessary risk of liability. Now, I'm not here to name names. I don't want to get into the specifics of these various emails, but I do want to say to you that starting in June, there were emails that went out that complained about actions by the town manager before, the board of selectmen. It continued into the fall with complaints about you're not moving fast enough and you're in getting the budget to us, you're, you're uh, jeopardizing us, you're not doing your job. It's fine to have opinions, but to express them in emails to other budget committee members that create the opportunity for a reply is a prescription for trouble under the Porter versus Sandwich case. Uh, as a matter of fact, there were three emails in which there were responses from uh, replies to such opinion emails, uh, one of which has been brought up before about a member saying, I've heard on the street that, that there's uh, people are complaining about uh, raises that have been given. And then a number, another member replies, uh, it bothers me too. Again, it's fine to have opinions, but to have that discussion on budget committee matters conducted outside of the public <coughs> in emails is a problem and should be avoided. Um, now we're we are through the budget season uh, there was by the way an appeal of the Porter versus sandwich decision to the New Hampshire Supreme Court that appeal last week was dropped that case has become final granted it is one Superior Court decision but it is the one that I know of that most directly addresses the subject and anyone who seeks to challenge something that a board in, in uh, town does that is informed by emails that go to all budget committee members or other board members uh, could very well cite this case and potentially another superior court judge is going to find that there's invalid meetings being conducted and liability on the part of the town that should be avoided again it creates an unnecessary risk uh, we're through the budget season, uh, regardless of how the vote comes out on keeping the budget committee or eliminating it, we're going to have another budget committee cycle that goes in next year. And what I think should happen is there should be a training session to, again, uh, inform the budget committee, do not do business by emails. It is fine to get informational emails, say, from the secretary saying to you, Here's your agenda. Here is your uh, here's your schedule. But to to get into this thing about under the guise of providing information, providing emails that bash the board of selectmen or bash other people or bash departments is just not appropriate uh, for discussion via email. Again, it's fine to have those opinions. You can express them in an open meeting in the public where people can hear what you're saying but to try to influence an outcome with these emails that are outside of the public, uh, again, is, is, in my view, not appropriate, and again, poses a risk of liability under Porter versus Sandwich. I think we have enough of a sample of these emails for training purposes that we don't need to continue to, to lo log all these emails, and uh, I would like, respectfully, the board's permission to stop. I'll make that motion. Second. In favor. Hmm? Just in favor. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, have some comment because oh, yeah. uh, uh, I want to back up uh, the rule of law in uh, uh, <coughs> Hampton, New Hampshire. And uh, uh, the law is being violated. Uh, there's a shadow government. Uh, Mr. Silberdick has been involved with these email chains. Uh, he's highly critical. Uh, he uh, opined, I, 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 I'm to believe, that uh, I could not serve as a negotiator because as a teenager, uh, as a Winnicott High School student, I, I was employed as a, a, a part-time summer employee. There is a shadow government. Uh, it's uh, spearheaded by um, an, uh, an appointed official. And uh, it's a violation of the law. 
and uh, I know many people, <coughs> we spoke of Jerry McConnell uh, last week, and uh, he was laid to rest. Uh, this is the United States of America, and people uh, that have served uh, outside of Hampton uh, when they go to work, and some people don't return, and some people come back uh, mentally scarred, some people come back physically wounded, some people don't come back at all. Uh, for people to violate the law when they sit here and they take an oath uh, from our town clerk, I don't think that's a waste of time. And uh, I'm here to assist town council uh, in upholding uh, the rule of law. Uh, whatever it takes, and it may be uncomfortable, and it uh, may be considered by some people to be a waste of time, but if we have a budget committee, uh, it's going to uh, be at the will of the people of this town and uh, the lawful abiding citizens of this town. And we're going to uphold the law. And Madam Woolsey, who I have often asserted is unfit for government service, and uh, I'm the one person on this board that uh, served with her when she created the chaos of years ago with her compadres, and none of them were reelected. Uh, but I don't consider it a waste of time. And uh, again, anything we can do to stamp out a shadow government that uh, uh, breaks the law, uh, we have union negotiations going on, and men and women are serving, and we have people violating the law. When we go to Porter Sandwich, what precedent is set in terms of litigation, in terms of tort threat, from people that negotiate in good faith in the shadow government that does exist and breaks the law, uh, what does that do to impugn the result if th these contracts are not approved? Where does this go? And what are the legal costs? So uh, it's not a waste of time. And uh, uh, no matter what committee you serve on in this, this town, no matter what board, if you sit here uh, and you are sworn by the town clerk, you obey the law or get out. And I applaud uh, uh, the town attorney for bringing this forward, and I don't consider it a waste of time. This is a highly charged budget committee. They were, they were voted a, uh, a wrist slap last year when their membership was reduced. They chose as a committee to appoint their chairperson, who was not elected as a selectman, who fired me as chairman, who drove Ben Moore off the board. It has been chaos, it has been rampant, it has been a conifer of, of destruction, an attempt to destroy personal reputations and dictate their will illegally in running this town. I'm not standing for it. I'm a graduate of Hampton Academy Junior High, Winnicott High School, the University of New Hampshire. Very, very humble education, but I'll stack it against anybody anywhere in the world. And Mr. Fernald and Mr. Cooper and all of my teachers at those institutions, and Rusty, you went there with me, uh, they'd be mortified. Uh, and I didn't catch that in the civics lesson. I didn't catch that in the Constitution. I didn't catch that in the state Constitution. And it's nonsense. And I applaud uh, uh, Attorney Gerald's and Mr. Welch's and yours, Mr. Bridal, your moral courage for standing up against this. And I don't consider it a waste of time. And when it stops, okay, and it's going to stop on our watch, when their conduct stops, and nobody's getting a pass on breaking the law, and we're saying, uh, geez, you had too much to drink. Uh, you're okay. You know, we're tired of enforcing the law. Mr. Flurry comes in here tonight and wants to keep a restaurant open for two hours. He goes and obeys the law and hires counsel. But we would have some that say the budget committee gets to break the law on a $26 million budget. Nonsense. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may, I'll rephrase waste of time. Not a waste of time, but I don't think we should go any further with this because it's not going to go any place. And it's been brought out that they, they did it. It's been brought out that they need uh, training to deal with it. Nobody's saying to just let it go, but I believe that it, it, it's time to let it go, to just not continue any further and to go with the training. So I would, I would rephrase that motion to stop the litigation of it right now and to go into the training phase that it doesn't happen again. I still have my second. Okay, so I understand what the motion is, that we are not going to pursue any more. Right. That we are going to make sure that they get some training. training. It's not just one, was not just one email, but was a number, as you stated, um, and that we are going to try to move forward with this, this whole thing. And I, I'd also want to say that I don't think that what we did was a waste of time at all. Definitely not. 
but I think by making what I suggested to make a public document, and if people really want to know what Mark has been going through and what he has put together so far, they should go and look. And they're all wrong, and they all shouldn't be in this town, and they definitely shouldn't be a part of the government. If people want Hampton to remain the way Hampton is and the way Hampton is supposed to be, they don't want those people in there messing it up, and that's what they're doing. Bottom line, I've been here for a year, and that's all they do. They throw things, a wrench into things that they don't even know half the facts. So I offer that when it gets put up onto the website, if people are generally concerned and they think that the board of selectmen are just pushing them off and not listening to them, go in there and look at the document, and you'll see. Okay, so we're right and they're wrong. So we have a motion and a second. And I just want to say that the one thing that we have to respect is that people did vote for them. And they are voted in and they are elected officials. So I, I will we say, have to yeah. say that uh, um, we have to respect the voters that voted yeah. for that. I'll, I'll, I won't be supporting this motion. And Madam Woolsey was not elected. She was not elected. Well, she was defeated. She was, defeated. Two or three people she was appointed. Nothing to do with the budget committee. Move the question. Move the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Four to one. Very good. Attorney General, thank you for all you've done with this. I know you've had a very busy schedule. You've been, uh, you've worked very hard on a number of things. Um, and this just took up a bunch of your time. So you've still got more work to do on some of those other cases. Um, but as we move forward, I would hope that you can, uh, find somebody to bring them some training, some training, and uh, we can move forward with this. Um, it, it was definitely not a waste of time Thank you. doing this. Thank you. So uh, we appreciate all you did. Anything else on a new business?